This sound file contains the spoken version of a Wikipedia article on Siesta, recorded by user Jonjola. The material recorded is current as of the 30th of November, 2012. Now, Siesta, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. A siesta is a short nap taken in the early afternoon, often after the midday meal. Such a period of sleep is a common tradition in some countries, particularly those where the weather is warm. Since the siesta is the traditional daytime sleep of Spain, and through Spanish influence of many Hispanic American countries and in the Philippines, the word siesta has been taken from Spanish, from the Latin or sexta, the sixth hour, counting from dawn, therefore noon, hence midday rest. Einhardt's Life of Charlemagne recounts the emperor's summertime siesta. Quote, In summer, after his midday meal, he would eat some fruit and take another drink. Then he would remove his shoes and undress completely, just as he did at night, and rest for two or three hours. Factors explaining the geographical distribution of the modern siesta are mainly high temperatures and heavy intake of food at the midday main meal. Combined, these two factors contribute to the feeling of post-lunch drowsiness. In these countries, the heat can be unbearable in the early afternoon, making a midday break at home ideal. However, in the cold Patagonia, people have siestas too. This can indicate that siestas have a stronger relation with culture than with climate. The original concept of a siesta seems to have been merely that of a midday break intended to allow people to spend time with their friends and family. A siesta takes place when the sun is at its highest point. This is when the sun's ultraviolet radiation is at its peak at midday. Prolonged exposure to ultraviolet radiation may result in sunburn, especially if one has fair skin. Recurring overexposure to ultraviolet radiation can cause some form of skin cancer. The sun's infrared radiation causes high air temperatures from the midday onwards, the highest temperatures taking place in the early afternoon. High temperatures can cause fatigue or, in more serious cases, heat exhaustion, hyperthermia or sunstroke, and death. Biological Needs for Naps Older, pre-teenage children are usually capable of napping, but acquire the ability to nap as teenagers as well. The timing of sleep in humans depends upon a balance between homeostatic sleep propensity, the need for sleep as a function of the amount of time elapsed, since the last adequate sleep episode, and circadian rhythms, which determine the ideal timing of a correctly structured and restorative sleep episode. The homeostatic pressure to sleep starts growing upon wakening. The circadian signal for wakefulness starts building in the late afternoon. As Harvard professor of sleep medicine, Charles A. Seisler notes, their circadian system is set up as a beautiful way to override the homeostatic drive for sleep. Thus, in many people, there is a dip when the drive for sleep has been building for hours and the drive for wakefulness has not yet started. This is, again quoting Seisler, a great time for a nap. The drive for wakefulness intensifies throughout the evening, making it difficult to get to sleep two to three hours before one's usual bedtime, 
when the wake maintenance zone ends. In some individuals, postprandial dip, a brief drop in blood glucose levels caused by the body's normal insulin response to a heavy meal, may produce drowsiness after the meal that can encourage a nap. However, the appearance of the drip is primarily circadian, as it occurs also in the absence of the meal. Siesta in other cultures. The concept of a midday nap is also prominent in other tropical or subtropical countries, where the afternoon heat dramatically reduces work productivity. The Washington Post of February 13, 2007, reports at length on studies in Greece that indicate that those who nap have less risk of heart attack. In the United States, the United Kingdom, and a growing number of other countries, a short sleep has been referred to as a power nap, a term coined by Cornell University social psychologist James Moss and recognized by other research scientists such as Sarah Mednick, as well as in the popular press. Decline in Practice Although many cultures acknowledge the benefits of a siesta or midday nap, this custom is in decline. Because many people now commute between home and work in much greater distances than in the past, it makes it harder to find a common time and place to rest each day. In Spain specifically, while under the threat of an economic crisis, an increasing number of people swap a lunchtime rest for extra hours of work. Cardiovascular Benefits The siesta habit has recently been associated with a 37% reduction in coronary mortality, possibly due to reduced cardiovascular stress mediated by daytime sleep. Nevertheless, epidemiological studies on the relations between cardiovascular health and siesta have led to conflicting conclusions, possibly because of poor control of moderator variables, such as physical activity. It is possible that people who take a siesta have different physical activity habits, for example, working earlier and scheduling more activity during the morning. Such differences in physical activity may mediate different 24-hour profiles in cardiovascular function. Even if such effects of physical activity can be discounted for explaining the relationship between siesta and cardiovascular health, it is still unknown whether it is the daytime nap itself, a supine posture, or the expectancy of a nap that is the most important factor. We now come to the end of the spoken article, Siesta. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 Unported License, available at http colon slash slash creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by dash sa slash 3.0.